and I'm the president of the Little Rock Christian Ministerial Alliance, who is a part of the coalition that overwhelmingly defeated the bond issue that was placed before the citizens. Following the uh, bond issue defeat, uh, there was a meeting after 5 o'clock uh, one evening, and it was determined that the bonds would be sold anyway. I have heard several of you indicate that you want the school district to be uh, returned to local control. Well, friends, that is certainly not local control. It is certainly not transparent. And I would like to know, as a patron and a taxpayer in this district, how in the world you made that decision after the citizens told you we did not want a bond issue. Wow. So first, there, there was no meeting. Uh, they followed the, the process that I described earlier in response to the first question. The recommendation came from uh, the district and uh, the, the you know, packet, an action packet, and the decision was made, uh, signed off by, by myself and with the cooperation from Mr. Ford. Uh, the bond issue that was done was not the same thing that was voted on. Uh, and as is common throughout the state of Arkansas, when uh, millages, bond extensions are defeated at the polls, there's still a responsibility of the district to move forward and meet the needs of the students. And the needs of the students in this case were the replacement of the McFarland High School. Mr. Ford can speak more to the, the details of that, uh, but given that responsibility, uh, the the refinancing of the bonds of a different method of financing <coughs> is the way that was chosen to meet that need, coupled with $37 million in the last year of DSA payment that is required under the settlement agreement to go to facilities. I'll add to that uh, question first is that uh, we, if, when the, we lost on the opportunity to refinance through the, the vote of the community. The very next thing that happens as a part of any place in the state that when you lose, you receive a letter from the state facility department asking you what are you going to do to take care of your facility needs that you sought community support for and you didn't receive. Now these community needs actually were framed by the board in 2014 by the Fannie Howie study that's over $300 million worth of needs. The most dramatic of those needs, in my estimation, as a superintendent, as the commissioner to share, is McClellan High School. So this moves us forward in terms of you know, solving the problem at McClellan. It also moves us forward in terms of uh, a variety of other facility things. Now, it brings in far less money. It brings in $90 million rather than $160 million. The biggest thing that came off of that chunk of money that we had asked for on the refinance is what are we going to go do to refurbish McClellan? That is going to have to be uh, worked on over the next three years as we hopefully move forward then on the high school in the southwest. I will share the high school in the southwest from the moment that I got here. And there are a variety of people in this room that uh, brought that up to me. Are you going to follow through on the commitment to make sure the southwest high school is going to get built? The tool of a second lead loan is used by districts throughout. If you go look at the package that was presented to the state board in terms of the financing aspect of this, and you watch that board uh, deliberate, you will hear from our expert, you'll hear from me about the soundness of the proposal in terms of the financing of this. And it does move us forward so that we don't go into physical distress, which is another form that the state can use if you haven't handled your uh, issues in terms of facilities. And again, there's 350 million probably at this point now of fiscal needs that are, have been identified for a lot of years, folks, and they need to be solved because they do impact our running progress. Next person. 